Dr. Mac Roach, who, when I was in training, we would hear all this stuff about the Roach criteria and prostate cancer. And I saw him one time, I was like, what? he's a brother, he's black. So I literally made a beeline in the middle of a conference and up to him, and I was like, like a little excited kid, and he was standing there talking, he's probably like, who is this chick, you know? But I was so excited to meet him, because literally in radiation oncology, there are fewer than 200 of us black folks in radiation oncology across the country. And I must say, Dr. Roach has been an amazing advocate for the work that we do um, around encouraging, particularly congregations, but also community work, to the point where um, President Obama actually appointed him to the National Cancer Advisory Board. So it is my distinct pleasure to to invite you, you to listen in to Dr. Roach. Well, I am truly honored, and um, uh, the best talk I ever saw given was a talk that had one slide. And, and, and on my bucket list is to give a talk with one slide one day, but not today. And I, I've been tempted to try to do it with one slide because my pickup was at 12.30 and you know it's about one o'clock and I'm catching an international flight. But uh, it's okay. What I wanna talk about is three of the hottest cutting edge areas among prostate doctors in terms of giving us guidelines about what we should do and what we shouldn't do. One was alluded to earlier, the U.S. Preventative Task Force, which basically recommended against screening. And this is a very controversial area, but black men need to get screened, okay? If, if, if you don't take anything else out of this, black men need to get screened. Not all black men need to be treated. Not, you know, not all people need to be treated, but screening, um, and, and I'll explain to you uh, why. Everybody knows where the prostate's located, I think. Um, but, and again, I'm gonna cut through here because if I miss my international flight, it could be a problem. Um, but the incidence of prostate cancer has dramatically dropped. This is the mortality rate has gone down in part because of screening and in part because of treatment. Since the US Preventative Task Force came out with a recommendation against screening, the screening rates have gone down. So fewer men are getting screened. And I can tell you, as someone who treats prostate cancer every day, we're seeing more and more men with more and more advanced disease. It's a problem, especially for African-American men. Now, I've done a lot of work with the American Cancer Society. I love the American Cancer Society, but the American Cancer Society followed the recommendations of the U.S. Preventive Task Force. And what they said is the decision to screen should be made after discussing the risk and the benefits of treatment, which seems like a really good recommendation. The problem is that if you are a primary care physician, you don't know the risk and benefits of screening and treatment, okay? Because I treat prostate cancer all the time, and I don't know the risk and benefits of treatment unless I know what kind of prostate cancer you have. If you have locally advanced prostate cancer, oh, you better hurry up and get treated. You know, if you got very early stage prostate cancer and you're 70 something years old, you may not need to be treated. But unless I know what kind of cancer you have, it makes no sense to discuss uh, the risk and benefits of treatment because there's too many patients out there in the real world and if you don't know what the risk and benefits are, it's an impossible recommendation. So I'm gonna skip through um, a lot of this and kind of get to part of the reason the U.S. Preventative Task Force came up with this recommendation against screening was because there were two large studies done, one an American study and one a European study. Now the European study was much bigger than the American study and much better than the American study. The European study, I mean in the American study, they claimed that it was only a 52% contamination rate. These men were randomized between screening with, with a PSA or no screening with PSA. But 52% of the men who were not supposed to get screened got screened anyway. That's what they said in the initial publication. 
And if you, if you were in the screen group, your risk of being diagnosed with prostate cancer was only 17% higher than the people who were not screened. But in Europe, the contamination rate was very low, and your risk of being diagnosed with prostate cancer was 70% higher because it was really a good screening study. And more recently, there are data that suggest that up to 85% of the men who were not supposed to get screened got screened anyway. So the American study is fundamentally flawed, and what the U.S. Preventive Task Force said, well, there's a big American study that there's an American study that says you don't benefit, and there's a bigger European study that says you do benefit. You got one positive, one negative, we just throw them both out. The European study shows a substantial reduction in mortality related to screening. Black men need to be screened. Uh, and now the U.S. Preventive Task Force recommendation went from a D to a C because there was a lot of pushback with data. And they said, well, okay. But, you know, African-American men have a higher incidence, a higher mortality rate, and the whole argument is sort of uh, doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to cut through to really what my bottom line is. And I wrote this. Um, I'm going to skip. This is a, there's another important study. This is the pivot study. This is what I call bad science, fake news, misinformation. Okay, so here's this, here's this New England Journal of Medicine article. This, this study was published twice in the New England Journal of Medicine. It's called the so-called pivot study, prostatectomy versus observation. And when you read the bottom line in the, in the conclusion, it basically suggests that these men did not benefit from having an operation. In other words, you don't need to be treated anyway for prostate cancer. But this is bad science bad information, misinformation. This study had 700 men. And, but what people don't understand is that these investigators back in 1994 published an article in which they promised to do a study with 2,000 men. And we're going to do a study, we're going to put 2,000 men, we're going to evaluate treatment versus no treatment. Well, they couldn't get 2,000 men on the study. These are veterans, and veterans are the easiest people to get on a study. Trust me on that, okay? They could only get 700 men, so they published the study anyway, twice in the New England Journal of Medicine. These curves show you the difference in survival, death from any cause, death from prostate cancer. And if you look at the data carefully, what you'll see is that in the men who had higher PSAs and men with higher grade tumor, the statistical test that we use called a p-value, we consider it positive if it's less than 0.05. This is 0.06 and this is 0.08. It's right there, but because they only had 700 men instead of 2,000 men, they're able to mislead people into thinking that the men didn't benefit in terms of surviving from treatment. This is bad science. So this is what I say about screening. This is the problem. If you took 100 men, and this is the way I, I, I tell people, look, you sh I think you should be screened. Now, I'm going to draw your PSA when I draw your other blood tests. If it's elevated, then we're going to have a conversation. If it's not elevated, we don't need to talk about prostate cancer too much. And what's going to happen is, 95% of people have a normal test. If you're a primary care doctor, you got 100 patients, do you want to spend all that time talking to those patients about the risk and benefits of something that you don't know when only five out of the 100 are going to have an abnormal test? That's a waste of time. Those people that have a normal test, you reassure, those people, those five people with the abnormal tests, you discuss the risk and benefits of a biopsy. I say you should get a biopsy. It's bleeding, it hurts a little bit, maybe infection, but not that bad. If the biopsy is positive, <laughs> I haven't had one though, so you know. But I had the test, but I haven't had a biopsy. 
But, um, but if the biopsy shows cancer, then you can discuss the risk and benefits of treatment based on whether the patient has low risk disease, intermediate disease, or high risk disease. And if you have low risk disease, most men, active surveillance is an appropriate way to go. If they have intermediate risk disease, there's mild treatment. If they have high risk disease, there's more aggressive treatment. So I am not arguing against informed consent. But I can tell you that if I start telling my patient about the about neoadjuvant androgen deprivation therapy with intensity modulated radiation and stereotactic body radiotherapy and the duration of androgen deprivation therapy, the risk of incontinence and erectile dysfunction, and he hasn't even had the blood test yet. <laughs> He's going to say, now wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. what was that? You don't need all that information. You just draw the blood. If it's elevated, then we have a conversation. Okay? Um, I believe in informed consent, but active surveillance is appropriate, when appropriate, and evidence-based treatment exists. And by the way, radiation is a very effective treatment for prostate cancer. So I think I'm gonna, these are my final conclusions. It's important to screen, decouple, you don't automatically treat people because they get diagnosed, but if you don't treat for cure, you won't cure those you treat. Thank you for your attention. I apologize. I'm about to run off the stage and catch my plane, but it, it's, I was truly honored. I felt a little bit guilty this morning because I was rocking in the front over here, and, and I was trying to figure out if I was in church or at a conference or whatever, and it felt too good to be at a conference, but thank you for your uh, invitation.